Hey everyone, welcome to Works for Tools channel. I'm Eric. Today we're going to take a look at the YA201 OBD2 Enhanced Code Scanner from eDiag. I thank Nancy for sending this out to me to test and review to show you guys. You can uh, check it out in a link below to be able to get it off Amazon. It's a $30 scanner and it's actually on sale for $26. Pretty powerful for the price. We'll get into that in a minute. You can also check them out on kingbolin.fan on Instagram. So I did a short earlier, kind of the unboxing. So we won't go through as much, but it comes with the scanner. It comes with the cord to update it. You don't need to charge it. It doesn't take batteries. You plug it into your OBD2 connector and it powers up and reads the car. It also comes with a quick guide, shows you a little bit about it. And then in the back of it, it has some abbreviations on terms for vehicles. So whether you're a do-it-yourselfer or a professional mechanic, it's actually a pretty powerful little scanner. We're gonna see that here in a minute. So check them out and see what you think. So let's get into it and see what this scanner can do. All right guys, so we have a 2014 Buick Verano here. I'm gonna hook up this E-Diag YA201 OBD2 scanner. And let's see what features it let us do on a newer vehicle, because it's different from newer to older. First, you gotta plug it into your data link connector. Only goes on one way. It'll power up. I really like that this has a longer cord than other little scanners like this, so that you can put it over the steering wheel and let it hang there. We'll turn the car on. And first, I want to show this battery feature. It's really neat. It shows where the voltage is. So we can see the battery's a little low at 2.1, but then when you start it, you can see. So it went to 12 or 10.5. So we can see that the battery can take the load of starting. So this shows the minimum max, and then you see right there the 14.6 is the max voltage. And then up there we can see what the voltage is actually at right now. So we know that it's charging. So that's really neat. Okay. We'll back out and we'll go up into the diagnosis. Really like that this has like a good hand grip too, or you can let it hang shows whether the lights on how many codes there are the monitors that are okay incomplete or not applicable so you just go on and on this newer vehicle it lets you do the ECM and this module and then whatever DMC is it's all part of the same thing I think but anyway so we can read the codes stored codes up there it tells you the P0010, and that's camshaft position sensor A. Now I haven't fixed this car yet, but I know it's the intake bank, intake camshaft actuator that's not working. I've done the test, I just don't have the part yet. But we're gonna clear it when we're done here and see if it lets us clear it even though it hasn't been replaced. Here's the other ones. Now, it didn't have all these codes, but because we've unplugged things, it has these codes now. This one's obviously a manufacturer specific, so we'll have to look that up if you wanted to know what those are. And this is from having the mass airflow disconnected. We've got the pending codes. And then you can go back. I like that there's a back feature too, rather than having to go all the way through and pick previous menu. And then the permanent codes. You can erase the codes, then we can go into the freeze frame, so it lets us see what happened on the P0011. Scroll down and see the parameters that it was doing. You can record this, you know, take a picture of it, and then try to duplicate it when you're done to make sure you fix the problem. So it gives you quite a bit of information on this one. It, like I said, this is a newer vehicle, the older ones, it doesn't give you as much which I hope to do another car after this one to give you another example. You got your vehicle info and then you can see the readiness like this. It tells you what's applicable, what's passed, and if it wouldn't have been passed, I'm sure that would have been a red mark. 
Mode 6 is a really cool feature because it lets you see the different sensors. I usually mo use Mode 6 for misfires because it'll tell you which one was a misfire even when something doesn't record it. So it'll tell you the test value, that's how many misfires there would have been if it had it, and then the minimum, and then that's the max it's allowed before it fails. So this one's a four cylinder, so it gives you all four cylinders. And then like the O2 sensor test doesn't happen on the older vehicles, just on the newer ones. You can get into here and then see different tests test value, minimum, maximum, and then it passed. So you can go through all those and do those sensor tests. So this really powerful monitor or a scanner for just a little $26 scanner, it's really neat. So we saw the info, or we saw the freeze frame, here's the vehicle info, so that's if you want the VIN and all that but we didn't do live data yet. So live data is really neat because it has graph display. This gives you the options of what you can actually graft. Get a little quieter in here. So these are the options of what it's gonna let you graft. Okay. So we can do something simple like the RPM so that you can watch it. We can pick it, we can pick more than one thing like RPM and vehicle speed sensor. Back out and now you can see that you have two things picked up here. Right there's our RPM and then it'll give minimum and maximum. So we can rev it or see where we're at and then it's still showing the maximum and then there's the graft. So that's a really neat feature. And then here's the miles per hour. If we were driving, obviously we're not moving. It would show what that is. And then again, you just go back. And we can record those two while we're doing it. If we want to, we get into record. We pick what we want to record back. And then it lets you put it in the slots. And then when you're done recording, you can go to playback. When we go to data stream, that lets us see. I really like this feature too, because you can hold it for two seconds on whatever PID you want, and it'll put it to the top. For instance, if we wanna watch the coolant temperature, hold it. Now it's at the top, so we don't have to scroll back down to it. In case it was something that you wanted to do down here, past the first screen, like our throttle position or mass airflow, hold it. Now it's at the top and we don't have to, and it kept the coolant at the top too. So we can scroll through to look at various parameters that it lets us look at. Very cool scanner, a lot more than just a code checker. And I don't see it on this one, but on other ones I've looked at, actually shows whether it's California emissions, so probably this one isn't California, so it doesn't show it here. And then we can go up, and then when we wanna get out of it, just back out of it. So that pretty much covers everything, I believe. The codes, you can erase codes, so let's erase them. We'll turn the car off. Turn the key back on so it's not running. Erase the codes. And then we wanna double check that the codes are actually erased. No pending. So the pending exists, there's probably the um, mass airflow or the intake air temperature sensor still unplugged out there. And then the permanent codes you can't erase. They have to, They'll go away after a period of time of the car being fixed, and then there won't be those codes anymore. So we can back out. And then another cool feature is this DTC lookup. Now, for whatever reason, I've noticed that if we're in a vehicle, like an Acura, and we put in, say, just a misfire code, 0301, 
it says the value, but it says it's reserved. So apparently they're not letting you have it under the manufacturers. But when we go to generic, then we can look up the same code and it'll tell you what it is. The misfire trouble code indicates, scroll down. There's a misfire in cylinder one. So there's some really neat features in this. It's more than just a tester. And then in the settings, we can change the language. We can change the units so that it'll be metric or English. So you can see Celsius or Fahrenheit. I have it to Fahrenheit because that's what we look at here. The data logging and then the self-test, whether it's going to test the scanner itself. So there's some... Pretty cool things that this does more than just a little code reader. I'm pretty impressed with it. And I've been using it for a few weeks, like I mentioned before. Getting the hang of it so I can show you guys what it does. So there it is. So I thought we'd take a quick look at my daughter's 05 Honda Accord. Maybe you haven't heard of a Buick Verano, so this is more of a familiar common car. And it we already went through what all the scanner can do. So this is just kind of a quick look to show that it does the same thing and it still lets you graft and everything. So on the graphing on this one, it gives you just different options on what it's gonna see and let you graft. So that's the list that it gives you on this one. And then the mode six, this one isn't as nice as the other one for it doesn't show you misfire and which one it gives you all these different numbers for tests so you have to figure out what the tests are maybe go into in each one of them and see which one would pass or fail and then it gives you limits and values and everything too go back out of that and then it has the O2 sensor test but on an older vehicle like this the 05 it is not supported on that so like i said this was just a quick look and then the component test most of the ones i've come across on this it says it's not supported this one says leak test and then it's command sent but i haven't seen where it did anything yet and then before when i checked it it didn't even give me the option of leak test so maybe it's getting there i tried to update but i didn't go to the right place so that's just a quick look. And then of course the battery test or voltage shows on any card that you look at because it's going through your OBD2 connector. All right, so that was the quick look at the Accord. All right, so that's what the scanner can do. I've been using it about three weeks trying to see how well it works and all the features of it. Um, I'm probably gonna still learn more about it and then I'm gonna update it once I get to the right site and see if that gives us any more options or anything. Um, I've been comparing it to my other scanner. Maybe I can do a video later and show that the side by side, maybe what the differences are. Otherwise, it's been a pretty cool scanner. And I'm not just saying that because they sent it to me, but it's actually come in pretty handy and I've been using that a lot now. I really like the battery feature. It shows what the draw is, you know, when you start it. So it's been pretty handy. Be sure to like, subscribe, and all that good stuff if you like the video. Do you guys have OBD2 scanners, the little generic ones? What are you using? How well do you like them? Let me know. Be sure to don't just work for tools, guys. Make the tools work for you. Have a great day. We'll see you on the next one. Thanks for watching.